continuously moving will continue to stay in that position will continue to move it means to say that the body is not ready to accept any change at its own will every body continues to be in a state of uniform motion with respect to time and continuously with respect to its surroundings Hello students this is SD sir from the temple of excellence vidyashram pre university mysore a new chapter a new beginning a new session in this session dear students we start understanding something called as laws of motion in the previous classes we have understood motion in one dimension and motion in a plane we have understood the nature concepts and consequences of motion happening in one dimension and motion happening in a plane now we need a set of laws to administer or govern the nature of motion a set of laws which can be framed to understand what actually is motion and that is what the genius mr newton has done he has framed three different laws he has given us three different laws to explain the nature of motion and that is what we are studying in this chapter dear students i call newton as a genius fine i can say a simple genius following from the apple falling from the orchid tree onto his head imagination of why this has happened leading to the gravitational theory once a friend of newton asked you have given us the most substantiating theory you have made us understand our existence gravitational theory what do you feel about that newton told i have just found the pebble on the sea shore the entire sea in front of me has to be discovered that was the simplicity the genius had he has done such a big contribution he has given us what gravitation means still he feels the entire ocean in front of him has to be discovered dear students that is the attitude 
which will lead one to success your simplicity to carry on your success the shoulders which are very simple to carry on the success will always succeed so this chapter will brief us with the loss of motion contributed by mr isaac newton now there are three laws of motion now we start understanding the first law of motion going back to the very first session what actually is motion students we told it is the change in the position of an object with respect to time and continuously with respect to its surroundings retrace again we told motion is a phenomenon of change in the position of an object with respect to time and continuously with respect to its surroundings now understanding the statement of the first law the first law says everybody every body in this universe continues to be in a state of uniform motion body continues to remain in the state of uniform motion or rest along a straight line unless compelled by an external force to change its position very beautiful alba any body which is continuously moving will continue to stay in that position will continue to move until an external force acts upon it and any body at rest continues to be at rest again until an external force acts upon it therefore we say every body continues to be in a state of uniform motion or rest along a straight line unless completed or compelled by an external force to change so again to observe here newton's first law is very clear in saying that any body which is at rest continues to be at rest until we apply some external force and any body which is moving continues to move until the external force is applied therefore here we understand a book which is placed on the table and is at rest 
continues to remain at rest until we apply some external force and keep it aside. So the external force is compelling the book to change its position from rest to set it into motion. A car which is moving uniformly on a straight road continues to move until we stop the car by applying brakes. And the external force applied here is the brake. So the position of any body does not change until an external cause in the form of force acts on it. So we say Newton's first law is the law which defines force. So the basic significance of Newton's first law is that we get the definition of force from that law and also Newton's first law is called the law of inertia. Now students, let us try to understand what actually is inertia. The textual meaning of the word inertia is rigidity. Inertia basically means rigidity which means to say not ready to accept changes. A body is rigid. It means to say that the body is not ready to accept any change at its own will. Tanagine yaude badalavane galana sahisala adana jadatwa atwa rigidity in takaritivi. My dear students, please to understand inertia is a property and not a phenomenon. As you say, elasticity is a property of a system. We say inertia is the property of a body. So it is a property of a body to resist change in the state of rest or uniform motion when an external force is applied. This inertia can also be defined as disability or incapability, disability or incapability of a body to change its position by itself without an external force. A body at rest continues to be at rest. A body which is moving continues to move. It is not ready to accept any change without any external force. And that is what is called inertia. The disability or the incapability of a body to accept 
changes without any external force and mass is the physical quantity which measures inertia it is easy to move a pebble which is at rest inertia is less mass is less huge boulder large external force has to be applied why mass is more therefore we say mass is the physical quantity which measures inertia very important one marker always it is asked which physical quantity measures inertia and the answer is mass now as an example for inertia a person who is traveling in a bus when the brakes are applied the upper part of the body moves forward that is because when the brakes are applied the lower part which is in touch with the floor it is not ready to accept the change it is inertiatic therefore only the upper part moves forward when we get down from a moving bus we don't immediately come to rest we have to run forward a few steps before coming to rest why because of inertia and therefore we say there are three types of inertia inertia due to rest inertia due to motion inertia due to direction and now coming to the understanding of what is force i told newton's first law basically defines force so what is force your previous classes you would have learnt simply it is the push or pull that is given to an object yes certainly yes but upgrading the thought applying my newton's first law we say force is an external agent which changes the position of a body which means to say it either changes the state of rest or motion of a body without force the position cannot change so it is an external agent acting on a system which will always change the position of a body and all of us we have understood that it is yes defined with a unit called newton again named after sir newton so in this session students we have had a basic glimpse to what actually was motion and how the first law gives the definition of force saying that no external force no change in the position how inertia is defined it is a property which depends upon external force to change its position and we have studied the three types of inertia in my next session i come up with newton's second law a very very important one until then have a nice time thank you